Hey everybody, and welcome back to the monthly wedding video on my channel because YouTube has placed me in this algorithm and I can't get out of it and let's just do it because it's still kind of funny. Okay? Stop with the wedding video, Charlie. It's so annoying. Stop clicking on it then. Damn. Stop watching it. <laughs> They're by far the most popular videos on my whole channel. Bride drinks detox shakes and has diarrhea all over her $15,000 gown. Stop it. Bridesmaids, anyone? <laughs> it happened. Posted in a Reddit thread titled, Did you ever attend a wedding that was a complete disaster? What happened? The event planner writes, I was speaking to the caterer when I happened to glance over and see the most curious blend of expressions pass over the bride's face. <laughs> and she frantically waved down my assistant. A few moments later, my headset beeped on and my assistant said, we have an issue for a tissue. Maybe quite a few tissues, if you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? It turns out that the bride had gambled on a fart and lost in a big way. Oh no, she sharted. I sharted once and then my friend started calling me Shartlet. I shouldn't have said that. It was a bad oyster. <laughs> a very bad oyster. God damn it. I love oysters, but... My bowels do not. Now the bride was wearing a huge full ball gown with a fitted bones strapless top and a sort of embellished mesh. Underneath she had a shaper garment, hoops and slips. The bride, it turns out, had been using some health shakes in an attempt to fix last minute bloating. This had mixed poorly with the cocktails from earlier and she had eaten a fairly decent breakfast. The substance that had come out of her body as a result just defied explanation. It was slimy, oily even. No! With stringy bits! Ah! With the consistency of hair gel. Ah! I, I, you know, that was a very visceral description, but I still cannot picture that. Not only had it been a rather profound accident, but the smell was unrivaled. Generally a substance no human body should emit. But the thing that set it over the edge, <laughs> there was more, was the shaper the bride wore as a latex deal that came down over the thighs and up to her bra. Waterproof, the poo had <laughs> just sort of filled it like a water balloon of horror. Shut the front door! Shut the back door, shut the front door, shut the windows, all of it, shut it all! The bride was now anxious that she needed to stay on schedule and have her first dance with her new husband. Oh God. After the event planner and her assistant attempted to help clean her up, the diarrhea had gotten everywhere in the bride's nail beds, on her legs, everywhere. Oh God, what a nightmare. The dance was a choreographed affair. And as the groom spun his bride around, hand on her waist, he's squishing the poo up inside of the waist trainer up and out of the back waistband. To our horror, we watch as an oily stain spread across the mid back of the gown. As we are still cringing from this, the groom sets his hand firmly in the middle of the poo stain. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is like my personal worst nightmare. I'm going to have dreams about this. This is so messed up. Is anyone still watching or are you all totally disgusted by what I just read? After the dance and cake cutting, the planner and her assistant had attempts to help clean up the bride. She walked in to find me in dish gloves and a poncho like American Psycho. The five minutes I was sponging down a sobbing naked bride. Oh, while I questioned every life decision that led to this point. They get the bride dressed in a cleaner but still smelly dress gave her a Xanax and get her back out to the party because they're professionals. The groom is a sport never directly saying anything but asking if we could cancel the garter toss as he didn't want to go under the skirt. That's fair. I think that's fair. Honestly, the groom might be the hero of this story. Throughout, he just goes with the flow. <laughs> no pun intended, I guess. Have you ever attended a wedding that was spectacularly off the charts? Nope, but I really appreciated that description. I felt like I was there if that it counts for anything. I'm disturbed, very disturbed. And this right here is your reminder to subscribe. Subscribe, please. If you subscribe, you're gonna be here before a million, which is pretty cool. I went to a wedding where the bride and groom hated vegetarians. Will vegetarian meals be served? Not exactly, but we will be having a buffet style. It should accommodate all ways of eating, even those who choose wrong and lack taste buds. Yes, I'm talking to you vegetarians. You think like vegetarians are like rabbits? Like they've never heard of like spices or salt or pepper or anything like. Tell me you're American without telling me. Kendall Jenner sparks wedding etiquette debate after wearing revealing dress to reception. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. That's what she wore to a wedding? 
Okay, let me, let me just say right here, this dress is gorgeous. She looks amazing. One of the coolest dresses I think I've ever seen, but I'm not sure I would wear it to a wedding, nor a funeral. <laughs> Personally, me, I wouldn't wear that to a wedding, but I would definitely wear it on a night out, 100%. Social media users seemed mostly unanimous in their agreement that Jenner committed a faux pas with her attire. Imagine Kendall Jenner wearing this to your wedding. I'm sorry, but Kendall wearing that dress to someone else's wedding is the most pick me stuff I've maybe ever seen. If I was built like Kendall Jenner, I'd wear that damn dress that she wore to the wedding. I mean, that's a very good point. Not a lot of people could pull off a dress like that. It's a pretty freaking amazing dress. She does look incredible. Why are so many people pissed about the dress that Kendall Jenner wore? She used that dress during the after party and not the actual wedding. Okay. And y'all are saying she's an attention seeker. You guys are giving her the attention. Make it make sense. Yeah, so this article says traditionally you want to let the bride shine, so maybe Jenner should have saved the dress for another occasion. That doesn't mean that you can't look nice for a wedding. Like, I think that goes without saying that you're supposed to look nice for a wedding. It's one of the few occasions where we wear nice dresses and tuxes and all that stuff. Um, but it is not orthodox, I will say that. Bridesmaids, utterly insane email sending rules for bachelorette party is a gift to us all. Emma's getting married in June. Emma's bachelorette party is at the beginning of May in Las Vegas. We will be there for a total of six days. There are 17 people going, all six of her bridesmaids, and the rest are other close friends. Taylor wasn't originally invited to the wedding. We were all pleasant with each other in college, but never really friends. Taylor contacted Emma in January and asked why she hadn't received her invitation. When Emma explained she wasn't invited, Taylor lost it and started this schmear campaign against Emma, saying how she betrayed the bond of sorority sisters. President of my sorority, Delta Nu. This was also weird because Taylor wasn't even in the same sorority as Emma or any of the other girls, okay? Side note, we all graduated college and I'm pretty sure none of us take sorority stuff this personal except for Taylor. Whatever, Emma caved in and extended an invitation. About a month ago, Taylor threw another fit because she wasn't invited to the bachelorette party. There was a big debate in our group chat and we ultimately decided what the hell, what's the worst that could happen and gave her details and invited her. Well, Taylor has emailed us all the lists of the rules for Vegas. Please enjoy this ridiculousness. My fave is definitely the second half of number six, asking one of the girls who has ADHD not to bring her methamphetamines, AKA her prescribed Adderall. Names are changed. Hi all. I'm really excited for our upcoming trip to Vegas. I think it'll be such a good time and we'll all finally get to bond. I know Vegas is known as a sin city, but despite this, I still have to uphold the moral code our father inscribed in my heart. Due to this, I have some ground rules that I'd like everyone to follow. I'm sorry, weren't you just invited like last minute and you're making rules? What the These will not only help me remain aligned with the church, but also keep us all out of trouble. Number one, Sunday the 12th. I have found an appropriate church and contacted the pastor explaining that we're from out of town, but we'd like to attend services. Sunday, 7.15 a.m., we'll be Ubering to the church. I can't wait to share God with all of you. I'm sorry. You want to go to church on a bachelorette party trip to Vegas? I think it'll be a nice way to cleanse us of our sins from that week. You're going to need a heck of a lot of holy water to cleanse my sins from a bachelorette party weekend in Vegas. In the hotel room, no hard liquor. What? Oh, you sound awful. You sound like no fun at all. I don't want people getting inebriated and falling from the balcony. Also, as this is my first time of being of age in, in an environment with prevalent drinking, I don't want to be tempted by these foul drinks. I'm not sure how I'll react to rum or tequila <laughs> or vodka. And I'd like to test these in more controlled environments. Please stick to light beers and red wines. There will be no sex taking place in our hotel rooms slash anywhere in the suite. I'm sorry, mom, mommy, sorry, mommy. As none of us have committed ourselves to husbands yet, there's no need to have premarital sex. Maybe not for you. Please don't invite random men back to the suite. I don't see a need for them to be there or know where we are staying. I don't want to be robbed. Please Venmo me $50 each as I will be buying groceries for the hotel room. The last thing we need is to be famished in that desert heat. Number six, absolutely under no circumstances, no, Purdy favors. Half of you work in positions that require you to have security clearances and I do not want you to be tempted by these substances. They bring nothing but problems. Please leave your Adderall at home. I understand you have medical condition, but as we will not be studying, there's no need for you to take your methamphetamines. I think that's all for now. Oh, well, you let us know if there's anything else, but I'm sure more will come up as time draws closer. Can't wait to see you all respectfully and with courteous passion.
That's insane. Like, you'd think that this woman would be like the maid of honor the way that she's talking. You know what I mean? But she she said all of this completely unprovoked. Like, this is just her rules for someone else's bachelorette party. Who are you? Who even are you? I'm going to be bringing as many boys and drinking as many tequilas and... <laughs> Not going to church in Vegas. That's the last thing one wants to do in Vegas. Unless you're getting married. Okay, so take all of these rules and reverse them. And that's how I plan a bachelorette. <laughs> Is it opposite day? Clearly the focus is on crazy, but can we also discuss a six day, 16 person bachelorette? Get the fuck out with that nonsense. Is this gonna be Emma's only trip ever? Why are these women entertaining this? I mean, yeah, that's a long time, like a very long time to spend in Vegas. Most people only spend like three days and for good reason. Very good reason. <laughs> I really hope someone just replied no and nothing else. <laughs> Just don't come. Like literally just don't come. Okay, but what's wrong with white wines? Wait, I didn't even register that. She's not allowing white wines? Oh, oh no, that's where I draw the line. Am I the a-hole for not allowing my ex-husband's girlfriend to wear my wedding dress? I, 35 female, have been divorced from my 41 male husband for three years. We have one son together, five years old. My ex, we will call him K, started dating another woman. We'll call her G. K and I have a great relationship with each other. We still love each other as friends. K started dating G about 10 months ago. G and I have become great friends and enjoy being around each other. Everything seemed to be going great until the other day. G and K have started talking about marriage. I know K is hesitant, but G really wants to be married and have children of her own. I guess she saw some old pictures of me in my wedding dress and has been raving about how pretty it was. The the other day we had coffee together and she brought up getting married soon. I told her how happy I was for her. Things changed though when she asked if she could wear my wedding dress. I was really shocked she even asked. Uh, yeah, who, like really? I immediately told her that I was flattered, but no. She immediately got extremely pouty and started to ask why. I explained that I just wasn't comfortable with her wearing my dress to marry my ex-husband. Ah! She got really upset and started to cause a scene. I walked out knowing that she was not going to calm down. About an hour later, my ex-husband called asking what happened. When I told him, he completely understood and was on my side, but it didn't end there. G has been having her friends and family call me and my work, calling me an a-hole for not sharing. You don't share wedding dresses. You just don't. G is claiming that I'm not over him and I'm just doing this to ruin her wedding. While it's true that I'm not over him, part of me just doesn't feel comfortable having her wear my dress. Y yeah. This whole argument has really put a strain on my ex and I's relationship and the relationship around my son. Part of me feels like I should give in. Don't! Don't give in! Stand your ground! I'm very emotionally invested. But I still just don't feel comfortable with it. So am I the a-hole for not letting her wear my dress? Edit to add, G told her friends and family that I offered for her to use the dress, but then backed out because I was jealous. I'm not sure how much of a spine K has since G seems to be already planning a wedding while he's hesitant about getting married. And he should be hesitant. G's a steamroller who probably is concocting this whole brouhaha. Never heard that, but okay, I'm gonna use that from now on. Because she's worried that K and OP aren't really done yet. I mean, I never thought about it that way, but like you could be right about that. Like who in their right mind would do that? So as you can probably tell, Reddit said that this person is not the a-hole. And I think that that is a reasonable assessment. Just imagine being Kay and his soon to second wife starts walking down the aisle and is wearing the same dress as X wore. That would be creepy as hell. Oh yeah. The crazier part is he hasn't proposed to her yet. Talking about getting married and being engaged are two different things. Yeah, that's a tough one really, but I'm gonna have to go with you're not the a-hole. A happily ever after ending without in-laws. Dude is refused by his girl's parents because his family isn't wealthy as hers. So she went to his company and we did this. Alrighty guys, those are some awful wedding disasters that actually happened and uh, I'm gonna go now because I have to pee. Cool. Bye! Oh wait. Subscribe!